And loading protocols is one of those areas, and obviously over time we have become, or many have become much more aggressive with it. And in many indications it's a good thing, but there's still also reservations where we should understand uh, where the limitations are uh, to not uh, get into uh, negative adventures. And in terms of the time to load or to loading a restoration from a moment of implant placement, we still sort of should look, I think, at the line as here that the lowest risk is if we wait longer, what we call the conventional or even late healing time or the time to loading versus then going into the red, the shorter that time uh, gets when we load an implant after it has been placed in the mode, in the bone, uh, more risks are attached to that or more things, negative things can happen. And so we had uh, actually the third time around, uh, also the last two consensus conferences, the loading protocols as a topic, so with a little different view angle each time, but addressing all the potential indications where early or immediate loading uh, versus the conventional loading uh, could be uh, considered or addressed. And it was in beautiful Bern uh, in May when Lisa just talked about it. She was in group five, we were in group four. I didn't find the individual group photo, but a lot of good looking men and women. And I would think the Australians in the group are probably the best looking ones. Uh, the group four had the topic implant loading protocols and our group leader this year was uh, Herman Gallucci who did that with great competence and uh, also uh, keeping the group going and keep it together. Uh, not an easy thing to do because you have opinionate, opinionated individuals in here uh, and I think the uh, outcome uh, was a very positive one. And it's sort of a cut and dry lecture and I have a lot of statements in there which I think have hand and feet and I want to get those to you and then obviously uh, mix, mix in some uh, clinical cases uh, with it. 